Hey, this is Derek Jordan. Welcome to the World Fusion Show, where we bring you the leading innovators in World Fusion music. Today, my guest is Samira Evans, who hails from New Orleans, but left her beloved city um, after Katrina in 2005 and has been living in Brattleboro. She is a wonderful singer, and we're going to bring you lots of her great music. So I just want to say welcome, Samira Evans, to the World Fusion Show. Thank you so much, Derek. It's so nice to be here. Finally. Yes. I finally <laughs> get to do it. It's fun, right? Um, yes. I'm not planning and talking, but <laughs> that's great. So I just would love to start and have you introduce yourself by talking a little bit about your background growing up in New Orleans and, you know, what it was like at home with your family, et cetera. Okay, so first of all, there's something that you actually don't know about me that I'm going to finally reveal to everyone. And that is, I was not born in New Orleans, but I lived most of my life in New Orleans. Um, but the city that I was born in is a music mecca too, and it's Cleveland, Ohio. Um, a lot of rock and roll Artists could not make it had they not gone to some of the clubs that, you know, gave them their stardom in Cleveland, Ohio. So I'm kind of proud of Cleveland, too. But I lived most of my life in New Orleans. Um, a little bit more about my background since I revealed the Cleveland issue. And that is my father is the first person who really inspired me as a singer because I come from a musical family. And just like many of the artists in New Orleans. And so my very first time singing, really, when I was a kid, like six years old, my father used to always sing me to sleep. Like most people read your, your uh, children to sleep. Well, he'd always sing and we'd sing in harmony. That's, that was my first introduction to music and getting interested in singing. Then my uncle, um, he was... Uh, you know, an amazing artist and actually had his own band called Donald Gregory and the Montclairs. And they recorded a song that made it, um, that became a gold record. Uh, and it's called Happy Feet Time. Happy Feet Time. You can actually find it on YouTube. And uh, he had a lot of artifacts in the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame. So he was doing pretty well for himself. So I used to watch him in the basement uh, rehearsing with his band. And I think that must have been when I really got the itch to to want to sing and um, went to college, Bowling Green State University. And I, that's where I started my career, um, actually performing with musicians and bands in, in, uh, in college. Yeah, that's great. So now you had a very important mentor, um, Willie Metcalf. I'd love you to share some of your relationship with him. Well, Willie, I met in New Orleans. When I moved to New Orleans, um, that's really where my career took off, uh, starting with Willie Metcalf, because he took me under his wing. and He taught me everything I need to know about jazz music um, and to present jazz music. Um, or any music, actually, to that to that fact, because you know you know have have to know how to count a few songs. You have to know how to you know your keys and so <laughs> forth. So Willie, um, he mentored many artists. Uh, he had what was called the Academy of Black Arts, and went Marcellus went through that academy. Um, Donald Harrison, Junior, Big Chief Donald Harrison Junior, and um, Terrence Blanchard. So many artists who have made it really um, big in the jazz field. Um, Willie mentored from New Orleans, and I happen to be one of them. And Willie was one of, uh, he took me to the jazz festival, and he'd always go into the um, inner city and gather kids there and teach them the music, and he would actually perform with them or have them present it at the New Orleans Jazz and Terrence Festival, and he'd have me be their conductor, and, uh, and of course, I would be a feature singer as well. So I went on to perform many, many years, like 14 consecutive years from the start with Willie um, uh, at the Jazz and Heritage Festival as a result. Yeah. So we're going to go to our first video song of yours called New Orleans Dreamin'. And would you do a quick intro for us for this song? Absolutely. New Orleans Dreamin' um, is mine and my husband, Chris Lenoir, who um, I moved to Vermont with. Uh, we wrote this song 
New Orleans Dream. And it's our homage to all the wonderful characters and, and artists, not all of them, but many of them in New Orleans. Yeah, it's really great. Let's go to the video right now. Oh, thank you. I've been dreaming about New Orleans All the Mardi Gras, kings and queens Don't need satchel to tell me what it means Cause I know I've been too long away From Oprah to Red Fiendane I dreamt about Irma, my queen of soul Jamming at the lion's den with Eddie Bo Then came Big Chief, Big Chief Mom's Patrol He had a new suit made of golden rice He said, I'll see you one day, Joseph Knight Next in my dream came Dr. John With his gray gray pouch and hairdress on I asked him what he think about my song Well he sits on an unbeatable He said hesitantly, Bonnaroo flavor. It's really killing it. Um, it's just great <laughs> stuff. Now, I wanted to ask you, you were you spent a lot of time, as you said, growing up in, and being in New Orleans. And one of the things you did was you worked as a radio programmer for WWOZ, which is a legendary radio station. So tell us about your stint there. So, um, you know, my, my degree actually was in marketing and sales, radio, television, and film. <laughs> It wasn't in music. You know, like I said, I come from a musical family. So I always had the interest in radio, obviously, because that was my you know, field in, in, or my uh, 
studies in college. So I worked for several different radio stations, but I landed um, doing a show on WWOZ for, I probably did it for almost, uh, I don't know, over 10 years, definitely, maybe 15 years. Um, I had a blues show and I really wanted a jazz show, but they had a blues segment open. And so uh, it was, it, it was, some, it was the bluesy blues show was what I call it right. <laughs> on Friday afternoons. And um yeah, I, I really enjoyed doing that. And, and that led me to doing live broadcast at the uh, New Orleans Jazz and Heritage Festival, um, where we where I'd oftentimes MC and bring people on stage as well as performing there, as well as um, just like an- announcing all the activities that were going on at the Jazz Fest. So it was really so much fun to work at that radio station. So you have worked with so many great people, including some very famous musicians like Dr. John and Aaron Neville of the Neville Brothers and many more, I'm sure. Um, but you did a gig in Northampton at the Academy of Music with Dr. John. And tell us, tell us about that. <laughs> so what's really funny is that I worked with a ton of amazing musicians from New Orleans, but people like um, Aaron Neville wasn't there that often. Dr. John was, you know, traveling all the time. So I didn't get many opportunities to work with people like them until I moved to New England. (laughs) (laughs) That was the funniest thing. I was like, I had worked with Charles Neville. um, And he told me when he moved to New England, he was here before I was, um, that if you, when you move here, I'll hook you up. So he hooked me up um, and I got an opportunity to work with Dr. John there. And I tell you what, um, that was just the dream. You know, Dr. John and I had spoken in New Orleans and, I've, you know, about the possibility of, of us doing some work together, but it didn't happen until he got here. And when I saw him on stage leaving, well, just before he left the stage, he gave me a kiss on, on my cheek. Right. <laughs> um, and then as he walked away, I have to tell you, I was really sad because I had a feeling that that would be the last time I saw Dr. John. Right, right. And so maybe about a year or so later, he passed away. Yeah. Um, but even even worse than that was was Charles Neville passed away pri- prior to Dr. John. Yeah, right. And I had no idea that we would lose Charles because he was, he was a picture of health. Yeah, right. And um, so the last gig that um, Dr. John, I mean, I'm, I'm sorry, that Charles Neville probably would have done, he called me just before he went to the hospital to tell me that um, I'm not going to be able to do that gig with you, which was going to happen in a couple of weeks because he was taking tests. So, yeah. So, yeah. Very sad. Really sad. Yeah, very sad. I I got to work with Charles, too, and it was wonderful every time we were together. It was really special. Now, we're going to go to our next video called Hot Club, a song of yours. Is this a song you wrote, too? Oh, well, yes. My husband and I, we actually, um, we work together. And uh, yeah, so we both wrote the song. Yes. yes Hot Club. And Hot Club, what's great about Hot Club is it ha- it really gives you that feel of the trad music that's out of New Orleans. Okay. It has that traditional feel. So I just wanted to share that about that the song. That's great. All right. Let's go to the video right now. I hear my cell phone ringing I know it's mine cause the ringtone's swinging Hot club, hot club, hot club all the time Say you wanna go where they're making a racket Get on your shoes and your house to the jacket Hot club, hot club, hot club all the time Right coast, left coast, whichever place the best host It don't matter to me Upside, downside, come along for the ride You end up in the place to be Red is barbecue with some chicken. On stage, the band is kicking. Hot club, hot club, hot club all the time.
right, we're back with Samira Evans. All right, our New Orleans chanteuse. Right? <laughs> we are. And, um, you know, so I wanted to ask you, um, you, uh, you know, there's a very famous TV show called Treme. And of course, you know, a lot of people on the show. So it was kind of cool for you to watch that, right? Oh, my gosh. I mean, I think I watched that show differently than everyone else did, or most people did, particularly people who didn't live in New Orleans, um, because I was, I, of course, I'm melancholy because I don't get to see all of my friends that often, but I got to see them on the Treme show. And it was really funny because I'd see Wanda Rizan, who's really a wonderful singer in New Orleans. And I said, oh, wow, that haircut looks really good on her. <laughs> so, you know, it was things like that, you know, and it, so, you know, it made me really, um, long for New Orleans to see the Treme, but, um, it, it was pretty true. To, um, yeah, you know, there are a lot of, you know, we, I got to see all of the air, people would see all of the areas of New Orleans and, um, you know, the different neighborhoods and so forth. Of course, there were actors on there um, that weren't from New Orleans, but I got a chance to see the radio station where Chris and I met, my husband and I met. And, and uh, yeah, so it, it was just awesome to, to be able to bring New Orleans back to me in that way. By, yeah. By yeah. So you did a gig. Uh, they brought you, Cabot Cheese brought you to New Orleans, um, which was kind of important, um, a, a sort of a major gig in your career. So tell us about that. Well, what made that special is because Cabot Cheese made it clear to me that they were one of the first responders of Katrina. And so um, they wanted to go back to raise money for Habitat of Humanity to um, build some homes in the, the, the Ninth Ward. And they saw an interview of me uh, five years after Katrina in one of the local rape, uh, papers, newspapers in, on this area. And they found me and they said, hey, would you like to go back home? And because they were going to raise money for the Habitat of Humanity, like I said. So I was like, absolutely. And they told me, you can hire a band. We'd like you to be the entertainment for this activity that we're doing. And um, they made me a hero because when I went there I, I, with them, I introduced them to WWOZ Radio, which promoted the whole event. And um, yeah, that was really an awesome way to go back home to be doing something to help um, some of my fellow uh, folks from New Orleans. Right. And also that was how you found the band to play on New Orleans Dreamin'. That's right. Because Chris and I had written the song and it was so great to go home and actually have original musicians, musicians from New Orleans play on that record. They were kicking it. That was great. Oh, yes, yes. Now, now we're going to go to our next song. And this is a bit of a departure. Uh, My Little Bodhisattva, it's not really a New Orleans style, it's more of a ballad, and but very, very poignant song. You want to say something about it? Just a little bit about it, and that is, I recorded that song uh, in New Orleans, um, where I had lost my child. Um, I had already moved here, had gone back to New Orleans, found out that I was um, with child, and gone back to New Orleans to record a second album I knew I needed since I was moving to the area. And I actually lost a child while I was there. And when I lost it, I realized that this child had um, a mission in my life to shine a light on a, a um, physical ailment that I had that could have been, um, I could have lost my life had I not been aware of it through surgery. So I wrote the song in hopes that it would help people to find meaning and purpose out of the most tragic situation. Yeah, um, yeah so I well, like to introduce it, my little Bodhisattva. It's an incredibly beautiful song. Let's listen to it right now.
here today and gone tomorrow I will not dwell in my sorrow Yes, I'll honor your life with a smile Cherishing that joyous day we all gathered around to pray Fortune surely come your way My little body suffer I know that you'll return again Maybe then we'll just be friends Or maybe we won't know each other Even though I am your mother But you just such a such a beautiful song I it's yeah. moving to me and it's just really fantastic really my lullaby to my child is yeah, what that song is so heartfelt it's so beautifully done Thank you. Um, now we're going to go to our next video this is actually a video of you performing with one of your bands <laughs> and this one is called sand flues so why don't you just let us know what this one's all about well, this was the first band that I put together, Samira Evans and our Handsome Devils, when I moved to the area. And I tell you, it's the cream of the crop of jazz musicians in this, um, around here. Um, with Morel Sprague on piano and um, Jason Ennis on guitar and Michael Bryan on bass, Michael Zotis on saxophone and Connor Meehan on drums. And it was just such a pleasure to do this live performance performance and recording with them um, at the Vermont Jazz Center. All right, let's go to the video right now. Okay. They just follow my hips, see? Watch out. Don't follow too close now. My husband will get you. Well, I always depended on strangers being kind. Yes, I always depended on strangers being kind. I am a motherless child. Keep myself high. I put two bits on the bar Got me a rock and ride But when I wake up in the 
right, we are back with Samira Evans. West. I wanted to say thank you so much for coming on the World Fusion Show today. It's been just great to have you. Well, it's been my pleasure. And, um, you know, your show has been getting a lot of great uh, attention, and I'm so happy to be a part of it. So thank you for bringing me. Well, you are a welcome addition to <laughs> Huge, wonderful cast of characters on the show. Thanks again, Samira. Thank you so much, Derek. All right, it's Derek Jordan. Thank you so much for joining us today on the World Fusion Show and with our wonderful guest, Samira Evans. Hope you enjoyed the New Orleans flavor that she brought, brought to the show. Now, um, we have, you know, so many great guests coming up. So please stay tuned. Follow us on Facebook. Subscribe to us on our YouTube channel. And, you know, tell your friends so we can keep this thing going. Also want to say thank you so much to our sponsors, Mackenzie Family Charitable Trust, Dean's Beans, Ron Dan's, Jeff Green, and Nancy Feinberg for your generous support. And as we always say on the show, remember, think globally listen locally, and support independent music. Mm -hmm.